Welcome to Endoscopy on Air 2020. Watch Douglas Rex talking about difficult and complex colonic EMR. Thanks for uh, the opportunity to join all of you. Thomas and Al asked me if I would talk about a few specific things, cold resection, access issues, getting at difficult polyps, uh, managing injury, dealing with fibrosis, and bleeding management during um, EMR. So first of all, cold resection. So everybody now is familiar with the use of cold snaring for lesions up to one centimeter in size. It's just as effective as hot snaring, and it is much uh, safer. So it's just taken over this space of one centimeter and smaller lesions. And we, I think, are in the midst of a cold revolution, and everyone is wondering how far we can go with this process. One area where we know we can be successful for lesions over a centimeter is for serrated lesions. So this is a patient with serrated polyposis. We're using a 20 millimeter snare here just to measure a couple of these. These are typically sized lesions. They seldom get uh, more than halfway around the bowel. Tons of them are sort of in the 10 to 30 millimeter size range. We have clear evidence now that these can be removed successfully without electrocautery. You can either piecemeal them out cold or inject them. I like injection because it allows you to see the perimeter of the lesion uh, very well. And in combination with a high definition scope, you can track that perimeter. And that's what's key to getting them out uh, successfully. So you can inject them really with anything. They will lift. They have very little submucosal fibrosis. So they lift very well as long as they haven't been previously biopsied. If you see one and you're going to refer it or remove it later, don't biopsy it because that will uh, tack them down. We're using a diminutive snare here. This is the U.S. Endoscopy Exacto. These snares are reduced in the diameter of the braid by about a third from a typical snare, so they cut a little bit uh, better. And even though we are going to piecemeal this lesion, it has a very high uh, success rate. This technique is cold from beginning to end. No aspect of it uh, is hot. Even at the end of it, where we would use the technique of snare tip soft coagulation, if we were using electrocautery, we don't do that here. We just rely on a wide excision of the lesion. Similarly, um, you don't have to clip these closed. Rarely, if you get an arterial bleed, you may want to clip that site, but otherwise you can leave it open. These are being done without epinephrine, but I think including epinephrine is a, is a very nice thing. I use a concentration of one to 200,000, but anywhere uh, diluted even to four or 500,000 will produce a nice uh, blanching effect. So we don't know yet. We have trials going on um, in the US, a multi-center trial comparing this technique in a randomized uh, fashion. We don't know yet whether this will be effective for adenomas. Certainly adenomas that are bulky or fibrotic, we're going to have problems with cold uh, resection. But in the serrated space, cold EMR or cold piecemeal resection has uh, really developed a lot of data now to support it. Secondly, uh, access issues. A couple of uh, important tools for access. First one is retroflexion. And on my little drawing here, I've designated some areas where retroflexion is very valuable. In the right colon, lesions that are draped across the hepatic flexure, especially the medial aspect. And in the right and transverse colon, we can safely retroflex with an adult or pediatric um, colonoscope. When we're over in the left colon, retroflexion can be very helpful with lesions that are draped across the rectosigmoid junction or on the proximal aspect of a very sharp bend in the cecum, but better for safety to use an upper endoscope because uh, there have been reports of perforation trying to unwind a colonoscope from retroflexion um, in the left colon. So here we are in the right colon. In some cases, just the injection uh, in retroflexion can be very helpful. It allows you to get into that edge that's right on the border of the normal mucosa and the lesion, but you can remove significant portions or all of the lesion in uh, retroflexion. Again, if you are in the sigmoid colon uh, or the retro rectosigmoid, here we're using an upper scope. You can see the instruments coming in from the left and this lesion was almost completely hidden on the forward view. 
Another important access tool, especially on the ileocecal valve, is the Olympus distal attachment or the US endoscopy uh, distal attachment. Uh, this device slips on. I like to just leave it out about three or four millimeters off the tip of the scope. And particularly for lesions on the ileocecal valve or the medial wall of the cecum, we can just tip the ileocecal valve into a position where we can access better. So here you see the cap, there's the valve orifice, and you'll see that we're deflecting the distal lip of the valve uh, down. We wanna make our initial injection usually near the valve orifice so that we push the lesion away. And now we're tipping it down and removing some polyp that's right down in the orifice. So this is incredibly valuable for lesions on the ileocecal valve where you need to tip them at you so that you can uh, see them directly. Also, when you come back for follow-up, it's very useful to have this cap on. Here again, we're on the ileocecal valve. You can see a little recurrence on the left. This lesion was, a there are some villi in the uh, ileum. The red area there is the scar. That's all normal scar, but you can see that how nicely we're pushing the distal uh, lip of the valve down so that we can expose this um, scar and uh, really see on FOSS or more on FOSS at tissue that we need to evaluate and remove. Just a word about muscle injury. I think the key muscle injury to be able to identify is the type three injury. Uh, Michael Burke has described this system. If type four or type five injuries are actually perforations, so they're easy to see. The real value of the submucosal uh, contrast is to stain the submucosa so that we can identify when a muscle injury occurs. And this has just about eliminated the risk of delayed uh, perforation. I think most muscle injuries occur from getting too greedy, and this has led to the recommendation to confine ourselves to 15 to 20 millimeter uh, snares for EMR. Here you can see in the base of this defect, we have the two parallel white lines there. That's uh, muscle uh, surrounded by submucosa, but that's cut muscle, the type three muscle injury. We must repair that. We can finish the EMR. Uh, but then we must repair this or there'll be a delayed perforation. Here are, is the specimen from this case, and you see when the specimen is turned over, the um, cut muscle on the, the base of the lesion. When we grab a larger piece of tissue, it's very common for people to recommend that you reopen the snare uh, so that you have, if you have some trapped muscle, it can slip out, and we've done that here, but despite that, we are going to um, cut the muscle, uh, you'll see in a moment. And again, once this occurs, it's fine to go ahead and finish the, um, the EMR. You wanna be a little bit careful about gas distension that you don't over distend, but there are the two uh, lines that indicate a muscle injury. Here there's a muscle injury in the transverse colon. The two parts of the colon with the greatest risk for muscle injury are the transverse um, and the cecum, and this is a type three becoming a type four, you'll see a free perforation here. These can still, uh, they're typically quite small. They're also fortunately very rare. When this occurs, I still prefer to close it with hemostatic clips. You can come out of the colon and use an Ovesco, but you risk having some stuff go out the colon. Occasionally it's hard to get back and find the perforation because of spasm. So I think in general it's better to close these with hemostatic uh, clips. I want to say a word about um, fibrotic lesions. We often now encounter lesions where previous attempts at resection have been made. You can see this rectal lesion has a visible scar on either side of it. One of the tools that I like to use to deal with this is that same cap that I showed you earlier for looking carefully at the ileocecal valve. So the technique is to use, first of all, a small snare to place it over flat or fibrotic uh, tissue that you feel you're gonna have a hard time snaring. And then we're just gonna suction that tissue up through the snare and into this short cap. Now the beauty of this cap is that it's safe. Um, I've used this hundreds of times. I've only had one muscle injury with it. On the other hand, if you were to use an EMR cap, uh, sort of uh, one of our modified variceal band ligators that we use commonly for EMR in the esophagus, um, in the colon, and surely in the duodenum, and suck like this, you're going to get the entire wall. But 
because this only sticks out three or four millimeters, it's very safe uh, to use this um, in the colon. And um, you want to use a fairly small snare, approach the tissue very closely, then suck the tissue up through the cap. And then uh, the technician is really closing blindly on this uh, tissue. So it takes a little bit of practice. Sometimes it's easier to use a flexible snare initially. I, I use sometimes the Boston uh, 11 millimeter cap to flex. If you can't use the cap, then of course avulsion is actually more effective. It just you just can't get as large a piece of uh, tissue. So here we're going to finish up along a fibrotic edge with avulsion. You can do this cold with cold forceps, pull the tissue off, and then use the snare tip. That's the cast uh, technique. I actually prefer hot avulsion, as described by Greg Haber, uh, usually using cutting current. Here's another very fibrotic lesion. This uh, lesion has had several attempts by the referring physician. So again, we place this small snare. The biggest snares I'll use for this are about 15 millimeters. Suck the polyp tissue up through the snare into the cap. And now the technician is closing very uh, slowly, telling you when they feel the tissue. Once you feel that tissue in the snare, or the technician feels it, then you can release the suction and take a look at what you've got. Some people actually do this technique uh, cold, but again, I prefer to do it with electrocautery. Um, that way we sort of keep the field dry. It's much easier to, uh, to uh, inspect, and you don't have to get another tool out to use uh, the snare tip to treat the area. So you actually, uh, in a lesion that's not fibrotic, a flat, elevated, uh, non-granular lesion that is uh, very broad and you're having a hard time snaring, you can use this. Generally, you can move quite quickly across it, but probably the most common uh, use for this is fibrosis. So notice that we have to approach the tissue very closely. If you don't do that, you'll have a tendency to suction tissue uh, in from the sides, normal tissue. Uh, which can be problematic. So you have to get very close to the tissue before you suction uh, this tissue up um, through the snare. So these two techniques, the cap technique, and then secondly, avulsion, I think are very useful for EMR. Of course, you can um, consider the full thickness resection uh, device for a fibrotic lesion. You can consider ESD. Fibrosis can be, of course, a problem uh, with ESD and can be a problem if there's very stiff tissue with suctioning into the FTRD device. Here we've got some residual tissue. We're going to finish that off with avulsion, grab the tissue, lift it, and then just tap the yellow pedal. And then usually I burn up the edge. We, you can use either STSC for these fibrotic lesions. Uh, I've gotten in the habit of using APC. We don't really have a comparative trial. Finally, just bleeding management during EMR. Probably 95% of our arterial bleeds during um, EMR can be managed using the snare tip on uh, soft coag. This is basically the same technique that Michael Burke's group has described for treating the perimeter, the normal appearing perimeter of uh, lesions after EMR and dramatically lowering the recurrence rate with that uh, technique. So we just put the snare tip out a short distance and then we're going to use um, the soft coag uh, current. I think this is very effective, very quick uh, to use for probably uh, 90 to 95 percent of all of our arterial bleeds. Now, obviously, we'd like to avoid these arterial bleeds again by using epinephrine for the most part, and that's uh, pretty effective at reducing the incidence of arterial hemorrhage during EMR. We want to have some tool around for bleeding that's too rapid to manage using the snare tip. And so we can either use the coag uh, graspers. The current here will be the same that we would use with the snare tip, uh, soft coagulation current. Soft coag current has a lower voltage than forced coag current. And so it will limit the depth of uh, injury. And it makes uh, the use of the snare tip very safe. I think only the snare tip should only be used uh, in the colon using soft coag current. So here we're grasping this. You can do this with a hot forcep if you don't have forced, uh, if you don't have the coag graspers, but of course those have teeth on them. So you want to be very careful. This is a grab, cauterize, and release uh, technique. We're not going to pull this tissue off. So good to have this around 
for the possibility of uh, more rapid uh, bleeding. So our two tools, the snare tip on soft coag and then the uh, coag graspers. Finally, the state of the art with regard to prophylactic clip closure is that if you've used electrocautery and the lesion is 20 millimeters or larger and located in the cecum, ascending or hepatic, I think you should consider clip closure. Some of these defects are too large to close, but surprisingly, even some of the four and five centimeter defects, depending on their shape, can be closed, and you can expect about a two-thirds reduction in the risk of bleeding. So just a bit of a survey about some tools uh, that can be helpful with problem solving in EMR, cold resection for staying out of trouble, difficult access, uh, managing type 3 muscle injury, dealing with fibrosis, and then intraprocedural uh, bleeding. And again, Thomas, uh, thanks, thanks for having me, and congratulations on this great course. Okay, Doc, uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, I would like to close this maybe with uh, two questions, uh, which might be almost philosophical. You know, the, the conventional EMR you were showing is currently under attack from two sides. There's one side saying that cold is the new hot, and the other side is the ESD pusher side. So uh, what, what will be the place in two years for, for the two? So I think that cold, we don't know, but um, people might be right that there's a subset of lesions for which cold is as or almost as effective. We, we don't have comparative uh, data from a randomized trial for serrated lesions, but the observational data has been so good. For larger adenomas, I think we don't know. And, and of course, there are some adenomas you just can't cut through uh, cold. So I think we're going to have to see randomized trials with regard to how far cold can go with adenomas. With regard to ESD, the obstacles to it uh, for much of the world are the same that they have been. Um, it takes a while uh, to do. There's a significant um, perforation rate. I think there's a high cost because of a lot of patients are admitted uh, for hospitalization. That's not to say that the concept of on-block resection is not a very powerful uh, concept. I, I get that. I, I would, I think, expect as the tools for ESD make it easier to do, uh, we'll see its gradual expansion. But it seems to be forbidden to do a randomized trial EMR versus ESD. Yeah, uh, it's, very, it's very difficult uh, to do about that. I, I think that on block is a very powerful concept, but really what we need to do to make this expand, at least in the US, for example, we think we need things like billing codes so that uh, we can get paid for a procedure that could take two, three, four times as long as ESD would take for the same size lesion. Uh, we need tools that make it uh, very safe uh, to do. And that includes, I think, not only the ESD tools, but also uh, simpler tools for closure of the, of the um, defects uh, afterwards. I think it's technical obstacles and uh, practical issues that are holding us back uh, right now with ESD versus um, EMR. So because of those, EMR still plays a very important role in managing colorectal lesions. Okay, Doc, uh, thank you very, very much. That uh, was a very nice conclusion and a masterly presentation. Thank you for joining us at the end. And uh, I think we come to the conclusion and I hope Ale will be uh, in the picture. Thanks for having me, Thomas.